Hi there, I'm Deacon Eric Cooley. I'm the Associate Director for the Institute of Diaconate Formation at the St. Paul Seminary. And oftentimes we get asked the question, what's the difference between a transitional deacon and a permanent deacon? And like many things in the church, this is one of those questions that has a simple answer and a more nuanced answer. So the simple answer is that a transitional deacon is a man who's on his way to be ordained to the priesthood. And so as a seminarian, as a part of that process, he's ordained a deacon uh, a year prior to being ordained to the priesthood. Versus a permanent deacon is a man who is not studying to be a priest, um, but is ordained to be a deacon permanently. Uh, And oftentimes, uh, permanent deacons, they can be married. Um, They may have families. They oftentimes work in uh, secular work, as well as being ordained to the clergy. But it raises the question, and the more nuanced answer is, why do we even have transitional deacons? Uh, What is the point of that? If they're making their way towards the priesthood, why are they ordained deacons first? And so for this, we have to understand a little bit about um, the sacrament of holy orders, where we have the three degrees, the three ranks, as it were, of the diaconate, uh, the presbyterate, or the priesthood, and the episcopate, or the bishops themselves. And from the earliest days of the church, we've had all three present. Now, certainly what their functions were, what their roles were, uh, this has continued to develop over time, um, but they've been present since the very beginning. Bishops have been tasked with this uh, sanctifying and with ruling and with teaching, and they have the fullness of holy orders. Uh, The priests participate in the bishop's ministry, Uh, of ruling and teaching and sanctifying. And so the both of them serve in persona Christi capitas, or in the person of Christ, the head. Deacons, on the other hand, uh, we do participate in the bishop's ministry, but we don't serve as Christ the head. We serve in persona Christi servi, which means Christ the servant. This is all present, really, from those earliest days. Again, wouldn't have been communicated this way, per se, But this kind of character of service uh, in the diaconate was present from the beginning uh, of the church. As the church continued to progress, we had what were called the minor orders. Uh, So these are things like acolyte and lector and porter. Uh, We had subdeacons and we had deacons, uh, the major orders as we move towards uh, ordination towards the priesthood. And this continued all the way up until the Second Vatican Council. And the church uh, council fathers uh, really recognized that as we wanted to proclaim Christ to, this, to the world, we needed to find uh, new ways to do this. As we continued to develop uh, this strategy, there was something kind of missing. What St. John Paul II called um, the church's service sacramentalized, and that's the role of the diaconate. And so Paul VI in 1967, he reestablished the order of the diaconate as a permanent rank precisely because there was this indelible character. There is this mark of service that the church herself founded on Christ and by Christ. Uh, Emulating Christ is the servant in all that she does. And so we see this play out even as a man continues to be uh, worked towards being ordained a priest and even towards the episcopate. A really uh, interesting way you can see this is at some of the more solemn liturgies, like the Chrism Mass, the archbishop will wear a dalmatic, which is the vestment that the deacon wears, underneath the chasuble that as a priest or a bishop he wears at Mass. And this is to symbolize, once you're ordained a deacon, you're always a deacon. And that continues with you. So this this idea that service should permeate all that the church does, that's the role of the deacon is to sacramentalize that, to make it present. So how does a a permanent deacon actually do that? Well, we have uh, three different areas of service. We have um, ministry of the word, ministry of the liturgy, and ministry of charity. So ministry of the word, you know, Christ himself, the word of God, comes forth and he proclaims the good news. The deacon is the herald of the gospel. And so he proclaims this. We see this at Mass, right? The deacon is the one that proclaims the gospel. But it's not just at Mass that we do this. 
every place we go, by our very lives, we proclaim this gospel. Uh, and as Christians, we're called to do this. Sacramentally, we do it uh, as deacons. We also have a ministry of the liturgy. And so, of course, you'll see us assisting at Mass. That's probably the most common place that you'll see uh, deacons. But we also can baptize. We can witness uh, marriages. Um, we can uh, preside at funeral services. Um, we oftentimes are the ones that are going and conducting a word and communion service in uh, care centers for the homebound, uh, for those um, who are seniors. So we really do kind of uh, sacramentalize, again, this uh, service within the liturgy itself. One of my favorite aspects of this is uh, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer where we have the doxology, if there's a deacon at Mass, he holds the chalice while the priest holds uh, the host as he says the doxology. And this is a beautiful example of how, yes, this is the service or this is the sacrifice that's being offered by uh, the high priest, Christ himself, in the person of the priest, but it is also the ultimate act of service to the Father. And we see this sacramentalized in the person of the deacon. And finally, we have the ministry of charity. And so just as uh, the source and summit of our faith is the Eucharist, but it's not meant to stay there, we're called at the end of Mass to go forth, the Mass has ended, the deacon gives this uh, admonishment. We go forth as this servant of God, the servant of Christ, to bring charity to the world. So we do this in a variety of ways. It may be ministry to uh, the prisons, maybe ministry in the hospitals, uh, a variety of different places, but it's always connected back. So we go forth with the love of Christ that we've received in the sacrament at the altar, and then we bring those concerns back with us. This is, again, why you see the deacon as the one that leaves the, uh, leads the universal prayer, gives the intercessions. He's the one that says, these are the needs of the community. Let's bring them to the Lord. And so we see this, uh, again, this ministry of service through these three different ways.